Hey everyone, welcome to Kiki Edge chat review of exhibitions. We got two, so this is a little different. So this is kind of, I don't think we ever did exhibitions before, have we? No, we haven't done exhibitions. No, so we were like, Christy always wanted to do them. So I was like, all right, since there's two that we saw, like I think last week, and they're new, so it was great to do them. And then, so yeah, like the first one is the, we're gonna review is T-Rex, the ultimate predator at the American Museum of Natural History. Yes, I'm gonna be looking down because I have my notes. It's a little bit, it's words I'm not gonna even like pronounce really well. So if we put, be prepared for that. And then the second one, which actually was the first exhibition we went on, uh, but she's gonna do a second, <laughs> was the Cre uh, Creta, uh, Frida Carlo. Uh, where was it? At Brooklyn Museum? Brooklyn Something like that? Yeah. Sorry, she didn't write it down, so I was like trying to remember. So, yes, uh, let's start with the T Rex one. Uh, yeah, uh, the T Rex Ultimate Predator. So, it's just about the T Rex and its super family and how it started as a fluffy hatchling so it's like a baby most of them didn't survive past one which was interesting to read um so yes they they were these little cute babies i don't know i think i put a picture of of it on my instagram but i don't remember but um but uh, you can look it up to like you put several pictures up yeah so you but you can look it up on the internet they have pictures if you just look up the t-rex thing and you put american national uh, museum of natural history um so yes the it's cute how little they were and then they became these apex predators so it's kind of interesting of course if you don't know the pigeon is a, <laughs> a descendant of like you know modern birds are descendants of a of a uh, dinosaurs basically or like or the basically the, the modern birds come from theropod theropod dinosaurs Woo! these hard words are gonna be so hard be prepared for that so the theropod dinosaurs are the ancestors of modern birds so pigeons are related to t-rex is good for that oh. <laughs> so that's interesting so when you look at a pigeon you're like damn that that was part of like the T Rex people. Like, he's like, that's interesting. Like, to grandfather <laughs> to that, um, the 300th power was. No, he's not just. Yeah, I think. <laughs> but the thing is, it's kind of confusing because theropod dinosaurs are the carnivores dinosaurs. I forgot what the herbivore dinosaurs were called. I know it starts with an S, I think. Sorry for that. Um, so it could be kind of confusing, like, where. Like the T, when I was trying to research it, what the T Rex or like how they, like, you know, are related, the modern birds are related. Like, it's like a lot of classifications, a lot of like different like separations of fam. It's hard because sometimes I was looking it up and some of it said, like, oh, they're not really that related. So they're not, like, it was so confusing. And I probably am saying some certain things wrong. So sorry about that. But what I was researching, that's what they said, so sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so the theropod dinosaurs are the short four limbs and they walk and run on their high limbs, you know. Um, so, you know, the two legs thing and stuff like that. Uh, Pedopod? Pedopod? Something like that? Yeah. I think Go I'm saying it right. Go! Hey. <laughs> this, is, this is the same words. Okay, so yes. And, you know, I'm just bringing this up because I found it interesting. So like the Archaeothor... Wait, no. Archaeothor... Dips? Lips? Dips? I don't know how to say it. Sounds good to me! <laughs> Yo, somebody like was gonna watch this video and they'd be like, Damn, she's saying all this wrong. Um, these are scientific words, though. Tell, they're really hard. You know I'm hard. If you watch these videos, you know I'm hard with basic ass words. You know these words are gonna just be like... Pfft. And I love dinosaurs, so yeah. So basically, sorry for the mess, the pronunciation of that word. Uh, they're trans, transitional, be, uh, bird like um, dinosaurs, I guess. Through uh, between the non, the the non avian f um, feathered dinosaurs and the non uh, oh and modern birds. So basically, they're that's the transitional dinosaur that they say that's where it started and then it broke off into the different you know the modern birds and shit 
Um, it's actually at the British uh, Natural the Natural History Museum in, in London. So yeah, there's the fossils there. <laughs> so anyways, so in the uh, exhibition they start with the hatchling um, when it, the T-Rex was a baby, it was cute, you're like, holy shit, can I have this? No, they grow up big. <laughs> um, then it starts with the super, like, who, um, paleontologist, the first paleontologist who found it. I think the last name was Brown or something. Yes, Sorry, I should have wrote that down. It was Brown. Okay, yeah. And, and then it started with the super family, then later, the, the super family map of all the ty Tyrannosauruses. And that was interesting. It's called Tyrannosaurus Cider. Dea. Dea? Oh, Tyrannosaurus Dea. There you go. Good. Okay. Ooh. Awesome. Ooh. I need water. <laughs> uh, so basically, that means um, uh, tyrant lizards. There you go. Whoa. So they include like two different species that span more than a hundred million years of evolution that's a lot and i just realized a million years of uh, years ago is m-y-a <laughs> which i just read that shit i should have known that uh, because he was looking at me like what why, why you didn't know that um so yes and but the t-rex only appeared at the very end of the period so the uh between um, between 66 million years and 68 million years and that's the period that was called uh, the one with the sea oh my god crustaceous crustaceous yes thank you I should know this I read dinosaur books and for some reason I can never crustaceous you know what I have trouble pr um, pronouncing the words yeah. I remember it it's in my head but I just can't pronounce it well enough that's just a good thing you know <laughs> so, hey. so yes, and they also have life-size models of a number of the Tyrannosaurus, including the Pyrosaurus Braley. Sorry. <laughs> I can't even okay. help you. Um, I can't. The earliest known Tyrannosaur that lived 160 million years ago. They have a model of that. That was really cool. They have another one of the Dai Dilong Paratorus. Taurus? Toradoxus. Toradoxus, okay. Paradoxus. Paradoxus, there you go. <laughs> Dialogue Di Paradoxus. Was the first uh, Tyrus Tyrannosaurus f found with fossil, uh, fossil feathers. So that was the first one that had the fossil feathers. You know how in Jurassic Park, I'm sure it had the rocket or right. for the <laughs> right. for the exhibition. Uh, that's where they. Um, uh, I think it was 1996. So this was the first um, Tyrannosaurus that they found with the fossil feathers, and that's when they started knowing that they had feathers and stuff. Um, and then they have also the Exo Exogangolong. I'm so sorry. Long Exogangolong, I think. Mm, so sorry. Cool. I'm so sorry. I'm saying that's this wrong. Um, it's a mid-sized dinosaur. So this is very basically this gave a rare glimpse. This was found in China. Sorry. Yeah, with the pronunciation so this is um a rare glimpse of the transitional again a transitional s species between the smaller earlier try um try trinosauruses and the layered giants you know like you know how the t-rexes got big so that's where they found like the medium-sized one and they saw notice how it got bigger and stuff like the later ones um also t i'm almost finished so don't worry uh, the T-Rex had excellent vision that was the size of oranges and a face forward like a hawk, which is funny because we just saw a hawk this week um, eating uh, air conditioner. Yeah, it was eating a bird and my mom was about to fight it. It was like, hell no, this shit ain't going to stay here eating this bird. It was scary. We were all just staring scared shit and my mom was like, psh, psh, psh. like get the hell out of here. It was just hilarious. It was cool. You know, nobody messes with my mom. That's it. Um, <laughs> and then it had like a set wider apart uh, face, basically giving it a superior depth precision uh, better than the other dinosaurs. And then they also have like a fossil, a, a fossil partial brain cast of a T-Rex, which we saw, which what I thought was really cool. I never saw that before actually anywhere. Awesome. So yes, it was actually a really damn good exhibition. 
of uh, uh, the T-Rex. You see um, where this apex predator, the famous like celebrity of the dinosaurs basically and how it started and the other families members and how it was and they have they have a life-size model of how it actually they think how it actually looked and I have a picture on Instagram uh, but you can look it up on the website if you put up the exhibition um, it's amazing so yeah. it, I call I call them Larry because it, it just it just came to my head like good. that that was kind of stupid <laughs> so yes it was really damn good it was expensive as hell, so <laughs> so I don't know. But if you like dinosaurs like I do, and if you really love them, and don't know how to pronounce their names, which is hilarious, go see them. <laughs> yeah. Go, go see it. Yeah. The T-Rex. You get to learn about the T-Rex. It's a, it's a really damn good. Yeah. It's a bit, lot of reading, so be prepared for that. So you're going to be just being there for like almost two hours, like just like reading, like what? Yeah. So yeah. That was my exhibition. Let's go to yours, because I'm probably went way over thing, a long time. <laughs> one of the coolest things that I, I thought I learned from the exhibition was that when the T-Rex would crush something, it was like four cars on top of a human person. Like it was like, like yeah, like that much the of a pressure. Weight, the, the pressure. Weight. Oh, oh my God! The curator, I forgot his name, uh, said that like when a T-Rex ate like or ate an animal or something, it would like the pressure of the jaws literally will make that animal explode that's how strong his jaw was like the the animal would explode whoa that's crazy that's crazy. i never knew that either. also another thing they didn't live past 30 they lived like about 28 28 yeah that's and their, their legs they're short their the arms are short because they didn't grow when they grew <laughs> so that was interesting no, you read all about that yeah. there you go. Yeah, so it was really damn good. Check it. Check it. Yeah, so check it out. Okay, so yes, I went a little over. Let's go straight to Christie's exhibition that we went to, Frida Carlo, which was damn amazingly good. Very good. I think out of the two, that was my... Actually, no, they were both good. <laughs> no, they were really good. As I love dinosaurs, so I'm not going to be like, hey, this was... But I, th this one was very affordable. I gotta give you that. The Free Carlo one. Was, yes, it was. It, was very, affordable. it was very informative. I have to say, the last time I went to a Frida Kahlo exhibition was in Philadelphia, and this one blew my mind. Now, this one was really that being good. said, you're not gonna get a lot of paintings in this exhibition. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna get a lot of paintings. It was more photographs. She, yeah, more photographs. I think they were, the Brooklyn Museum was more concerned with telling a story about Frida Kahlo. Not concerned, but you know, more interested in telling a story about Frida Kahlo. Like for instance, you'll see a lot more photographs. You'll see a lot of old archival Mexican footage about Mexico, which was freaking awesome. And um, I think that one of the like you'll see very popular um, pieces, self-portraits, like self-portraits monkeys, and then the the self-portrait with the headdress. And uh, what else would you see? Jewelry. Jewelry. Yeah. Jewelry that she would wear. Her photos of her family. Photos of her family. Photos of her family. The most ones that and these were very personal artifacts that, that the Brooklyn Museum has brought to New York City. Her, um, including her clothing, her her corsets, her cat's corsets, which she painted on. Very personal pieces, mind you. That was the most interesting part of the exhibition, was the exhibition, uh, the part of her disability and how it was part of her. And yeah, okay, cool, sorry. And, no, no, please, please no, 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 interject no, no. when you need to. Okay. Yes, awesome. So yeah, her. this is what they wanted to highlight was her health and her disabilities and also her political affiliations to what is was the at the time party? was the, the Communist Party yeah, and the okay. Mexican Revolution during the time of the Mexican mm -hmm. Revolution which was from 1910 to 1917 um, mm -hmm. she of course was married to Diego Rivera so whoever doesn't know that another famous painter another famous painter muralist as well very popular muralist during the time of Mexican Revolution. So I think they did a really good job at showing her story. Now I would have loved to hear a lot more histor historical facts, mm -hmm. but 
and her, the relationship between the Mexican Revolution and Frida Kahlo's artwork, but I did a little research and just a little digging to really find the affiliations between that, and it was this idea of dressing in the Tijuana traditional clothing, which you'll see a lot of her personal pieces, and some pieces that were actually not hers, but would have been something similar to what she has worn. And the Tijuana traditional dresses are from Istmo de Tijuana, Estado Oaxaca? No, yeah, Oaxaca, Mexico. Oaxaca, Mexico. Yeah. I don't know how to say it. So, Istmo de remember, you know, we. Tijuana, <laughs> Estado de Oaxaca, Mexico. So, oh, wow. that okay, was a home outfit. Yeah. Like, Oh, I was like it. practicing that. Wow. I was like, "Yeah, Oaxaca," because I kept on saying Oaxaca wrong, and I've heard it so many times with so many different people. Somebody videos. behind us, the screen is gonna be like, "You're saying it wrong." So I know, but. I know. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, let's hey. stop. So that is actually a region in Mexico by the Gulf of Mexico, of uh, the Gulf of Mexico, and is a matriarchal society. Now, she adapted the clothing from these indigenous women who are very independent. Uh, from what I read, they, you know, they don't need to get married because they, you know, they make their own money from selling hey. these traditional clothing. So they're nice. very independent, which I thought was awesome. That's awesome. So, Give me information. <laughs> so Frida Kahlo, during the time of the Mexican Revolution, was involved in that. She participated in marches, and I think you see an image, a photograph of it in the museum. They didn't really go into much the like, political context, and I get that because it's like, how do you, you know, really, you know, give the meat of that without going too far, or, you know, too political or anything like that. But for her, in her artwork, she was being a revolutionist by presenting herself in self-portraits and dressing in this Tijuana clothing, which was really an act of defiance in a sense because during. The, the purpose of the Mexican Revolution was to really stop the old ways of Spanish colonial rule, which at that time people even was still, you know, what, where the clothing was very influential from the European clothing, so that's mm -hmm. what they wore. Like Mexicans would wear a lot of very inspired European clothing and, which, dress, and sorry, dresses. To break which in the photos her family wore a lot. Yeah, her family no, wore a lot. That's what I noticed. Yeah. Because her dad was German, which I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, so her dad that was, was German. There was a lot of like influence especially because of the Spanish rule at one point at one point, which they had a, a previous war. But there was still a lot of influence by the European and Spanish colonial rule that they wanted to break from. So that's why uh, a lot of the Mexican Revolution was influenced. Uh, the identity of it was very much empowered by artists and liberals and intellectuals. And so that was her con contribution to it, not only in her work, her personal work, but also in the act of actually going out there and actions and marching and being a part of this communist party, which mm -hmm. I thought was really cool. I don't know too much farther than that, and I would love to dig in more, but if you guys know anything that you want to share, any links, anything like that, comment below. Comment below. Anything. Anything. That was so cool. So yeah, she was inspired, like they, in, the, in the exhibition, she was inspired by her father's portraits because he did a lot of photographic portraits of people in the community and that's how he made a living. He was a very popular photographer, right? Mm. And so they say that that was what influenced her in her portraiture, in her self-portraits, and her paintings. Um, so I thought that that was cool. And you see some, sorry, you see some of the traditional clothes that she wore, I, don't, I forgot what they were called again, sorry. Um, the Juana traditional dresses. Yeah, the Juana traditional dresses. You see them at the end of the exhibition after mm -hmm. the uh, the disability exhi the one about the, her, 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 her. Yeah, oh, and yeah. Um, um, you also like get. I don't know if you're gonna bring that up about the archaeological items that she had in her Casa Azul. Yeah, so, so oh, in her Casa Azul, she wanted to make it somewhat of an oasis and very traditional in a sense of what kind of artwork she put in there. So she used, she had a lot of Mesoamerican artifacts, mm -hmm. which they don't really oh, have nice. her personal artifacts, but the Brooklyn Museum did a great job of displaying their own collection mm -hmm. as to say that this is what she would have kind of like had yeah. in her own Casa Azul. You remember what I thought it was? I was like, wow, they really bring all this shit. 
I didn't help. And they're like, no, 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 you gotta read. You know, <laughs> this is for Brooklyn. So the show, I think, is a very personal story about her life. The photographs yeah. are amazing. There's particular photographs by an artist called Nicholas Murray, who I think she had a relationship with or personal friendship with or lover. I, I don't remember exactly what it was. And those portraits of her are so vibrant, so beautiful, so traditional. It's amazing. It is totally worth seeing. She went through and, a lot. And her, yeah, and I, I think they were she able to lot. really express what this what this artist went through and her 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 with her health deteriorating, especially with the showing of the the corsets. Which I was like at first, I was like. Oh damn, that's really personal. But I love but, how she dressed yeah. up still yeah. with it, and yeah. was just like, yeah, yeah, I'm still gonna look good. And yeah. Why? <laughs> so <laughs> even I mean, though she was suffering inside, like, yeah, she yeah. wanted she wanted to live, and living yeah. was doing her art, right? And ex and just sharing it with the world. So she she came to she did some pieces here in New York, you know, in other places as well. And so there's not too many pieces here in actual paintings but just see photographs of her working on other um, other paintings that she has done so my next mission is to get to La Casa Azul because I can't even imagine awesome what that Delta. looks like and it so would be great. that's and, it well I just have it the, for the personal artifacts it was in their will stipulated that it would only be released to the public 15 years after Diego Rivera's death and I just thought that that was so like personal like you know, even to reveal them now, like, but I feel like she wanted to share her story yeah, with the world. She did. She was a creator. She was an she artist. She was a creator. And, she, she, and yeah, you see that, was. and they explain all the uh, her relationship with Diego, the struggles, the tumultuous, passionate, temptuous relationship she had with Diego, and her miscarriage due to her health. Her health issues. She had like three, right? I think. Yeah, I think it was three. And and all these things are are so relevant in her artwork and so and she, that she portrays in her artwork. Her work is so personal. This is why I love Frida Kahlo. She's she amazing. She is woman. not afraid to sh to show her deepest, darkest self in the work, and that's why that's why I love her. And a lot of people are like. You know, some people think like she's a feminist. I think she goes beyond that. I don't know. I just can't explain it. But it's just so like, she is awesome. Go see the show. It is so worth yeah. it. Because who knows when the next one will be? Because the Philadelphia exhibition was like probably about ten to fifteen years ago. Oh, so when is this exhibition done though? A May twelfth. May twelfth actually. So, so it's April. So it's through. like next month. Now, if this is review is up before Saturday. Brooklyn Museum has a Target free Saturday. I don't exactly know if that means free tickets to the actual exhibition. So look it up on. All right, guys. All right. So. So anyways. <laughs> so anyways, yo. <laughs> so anyways, if you're in Manhattan, you actually sorry. If you're in New York City, go to Brooklyn Museum this Saturday. It's Target free Saturday. I'm not sure if the exhibition itself is going to be free, but there's going to be a whole bunch of activities. You know specifically um, influenced by the show itself, the, the Frida Kahlo show. So, but also keep in mind that there's going to be a lot of folks. So I would suggest going early and lining up probably. The line's probably going to be long. Anyways, check it out on their website, brooklynmuseum.org. Oh, the website. I was going to bring up the Brooklyn Museum shop. Oh, yes. Because I don't know. Uh, they were selling traditional clothing. And it was weird just seeing white women and little white girls like buying them and like hey and it was just it was just strange. It's strange. It was. Weird. I was like looking at them like, because it was traditional Mexican dresses and then and the fans and I was just like, I don't know. It was just weird. I thought it was weird. I don't. Know. Okay. I just wanted to bring that up. Sure. So. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> All right. So I hope you guys check out the exhibition. Yeah. Check if out the exhibition. You like this. Review which and sorry of this a lot of information. But yeah, sorry of this review has this fan in the background. We just realized now. Yeah, we left our fan, fan on, on and we cannot re-record. Yeah, and also of it's weird because our video stopped, and we had to shoot this video and delete so, a lot of other videos, yeah, and it had to. It, it was too much. So of this is weird editing, 
going on when you see this video it's because it had it was stopped and we had to delete shit and do this new video just to say goodbye just to say goodbye because we long. love you <laughs> yeah you know, we didn't want to do it half-ass um, or at least try not to do it <laughs> anyway uh, anyways yes go to see the exhibition Yay. and we're, our next video is going to be a movie review and we're going back to movie reviews but don't worry we're going to do exhibitions next time we go next month we definitely have one for in May and that one's oh, going to be interesting that's going to be because hopefully, different hopefully, hopefully hope. different places different places <laughs> different places yay not here so <laughs> peace out peace out